To undertake something so complex and so massive requires very careful planning. The planning team evaluated the plateau from both a macro and a micro perspective. The macro perspective was achieved by using geographical information systems to map the entire plateau and by giving each watershed a unique address. The micro perspective was acquired by participatory assessment that was then compiled into databases to learn exactly what the local people understood and what had worked in communities that had more success in protecting their environment. And over three or four years, we designed together with the local people, it was a very active involvement, a package which you can apply in a small watershed, which on the one hand helps the farmers to improve their incomes and their lives, and on the other hand restores the ecological environment. Gradually, principles began to emerge. In the hilly land, the experts determined that any slope over 25 degrees was unsuitable for agriculture because whatever could be produced on this land would be worth less than the ecosystem function that had been lost. This led the authorities to designate areas where farming was forbidden, where the land was allowed to return to a more natural state. Combining this principle with geographical information systems allowed for the mapping of individual fields and areas that could and should be returned to natural ecosystem function. However, we found some places, we found some villages where certain things had been done successfully and we looked carefully and we tried to understand what it would take to scale this up. By analyzing the few more successful villages, the team determined that several traditional practices would have to end. New policies were formulated, banning tree cutting, planting on hillsides, and the free ranging of goats and sheep. One thing that the project learned was that you can't just work where the conditions are good, but that you must go to the worst place. In the northern part of the plateau, where rainfall is very low, shifting sands were a major problem that could overwhelm agricultural or natural lands. In these cases, dune stabilization was required to stop the desert from growing. Ensuring that the local people understood what was being proposed became an important early part of the project. This was not always easy. The leaders explain the policies and the people discussed how this would affect them.
我们就是要抓这个，这可一定要达到他们项目上的标准。There were several sensitive issues, and first among them was land use rights. And the first key policy I'm, I would talk about is the land use rights for the farmers. If the farmers build a terrace and they don't own that terrace, they will not take care of it, they will not invest in the terrace, and it will wash out the first time there is a major thunderstorm, and it's a failure. So what we have done and what we focused on together over the past 10 years is getting these policies right and implementing them on the ground, not on paper, but in the village, village by village. Every household in this project has received a long-term land use contract for every single piece that was invested in this project. Every terrace that you see, every tree planting area is contracted to a household and they are responsible for it. That is the first part of sustainability. And it's, it's an absolute key part. Dividing the land affects the people's lives for years to come. It is crucial that it's done transparently. In the Luce Plateau, the local people themselves determined the division and entire communities participated to ensure that the land was fairly divided. Receiving land use contracts and being paid for their labor were powerful incentives. Once it was understood that they were the direct beneficiaries of the improved land and the new sustainable agricultural methods, the people's participation became the central part of the project. Every field created was contracted to individual farming families, giving them both rights and responsibilities. By bringing effective administration to remote areas, the project helped to introduce modern management systems to communities that had relied on unsustainable traditions for generations. This addition was one more step that helped the people toward a sustainable future. Stand back a little. One of the most common arguments against change is that poor people are so focused on survival they can't think about sustainability or environmental conservation. In order to help the local people make the transition, the Luce Plateau Watershed Rehabilitation Project hired them to implement new practices. Although historically, the people's destructive behavior had been the cause of much of the degradation. The project made their work central to restoring ecological balance. In short, the people became the solution.